This video presentation introduces the idea of the frequency response of a system. Basically, the frequency response deals with how sinusoids are altered by a system. Um, and the reason why we're so interested in how sinusoids are, are, are altered by a system is because all signals can be made up of a sum of sinusoids. So um, what I'm going to just quickly run through is a couple of examples of what I mean. Um, here's my first example. I have a system which I've labelled as system 1. And I have an input of this sinusoid here. And the output is this sinusoid here. And what you'll notice is that the frequency of the sinusoid hasn't changed. Only the amplitude has changed in this case. The phase hasn't changed either. Now it's important to note that when it comes to sinusoids, only the amplitude or the phase will be changed. Now really both the amplitude and the phase can be changed at the same time, but the important point is that the frequency will never be changed by a system, at least the systems you're going to be dealing with here. They're referred to as linear time invariant systems. Um, so just written out the mathematics as well, just to clarify, so that we have a sinusoid of a certain frequency going through with a certain phase shift and of a certain amplitude A1. Um, well, after the sinusoid has been passed through the system, the amplitude is now A2. In this case, A2 is greater than A1. Uh, the phase shift is the same, so it's phi1. Um, so that shows that there's been no phase shift imparted on this sinusoid. I just have another quick example now. So I have the same system, again labelling it as um, system 1. This time we're dealing with a, a sinusoid of a different frequency. Uh, in this case the frequency is a little bit slower. It's been passed through the system. On this, in this case there's been a phase shift imparted on the sinusoid. So there's been a phase shift looking at the mathematics of pi over 2 radians. Okay, so Really what I want you to come away with from this little discussion is that um, frequency response tells you how sinusoids are altered by a system. You need to know that the frequency of the sinusoid will never be changed. No matter what sinusoid it is, the frequency will never be changed. Only the amplitude and phase can be changed by a system. Okay? Um, so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration now of where um, frequency responses are used in a practical um, from a practical perspective. So I'm going to open up an application called Winamp. Here's the application. Um, it's just a media player. I'll just bring that back to the start. Do a little volume. Okay, so it's a media application that plays back music. Um, one of the nice features of this application is that we have uh, a display here, just up here in the top left corner, that shows the frequency content of the signal as it evolves over time. So here we have, this is our frequency axis here. This is the amplitude of all the various frequency components. Now it's fairly rough, but it, it gives a good idea of what frequencies are being played at a particular time. And really these correspond to groups of sinusoids. Okay, so the application also has this equalizer, and an equalizer is just a utility to allow us to change the frequency, the amplitude of the frequencies in the signal. So effectively what we're doing is changing the frequency response of this application. So let's just boost the base frequencies and you'll hear what I mean. Now as well as hearing the base frequencies being boosted, you can see it up here. So this is the frequency content. You can see the low frequencies have now been amplified. Now the other thing to take a look at is this line here. This shows us effectively what's called the magnitude response of the system. So we have the low frequencies being amplified by this raised line. Up here the red part shows us that it's, those frequencies have been amplified. And then the, the lower frequencies have been left as is. We can also reduce the lower frequencies. Keep an eye on this line here, it shows the frequency response, or the, effectively that's a magnitude response, it tells us how the amplitudes of sinusoids have been changed. The only other feature that can be changed, of course, is the phase. So this doesn't show us the phase response. 
and you won't ever see that with audio applications because our hearing isn't that sensitive to phase. So let's just change this around. Let's reduce the bass. Keep an eye up here. Also keep an eye here. This is the magnitude response effectively. This is the frequency content of the signal. Let's reduce the bass. Now let's let's amplify all the high frequencies. And what's great about audio applications is that you can actually hear the frequencies as well being amplified as well as seeing it. Um, this is basically the frequency, or in, well it's a frequency response but in magnitude only. It doesn't tell us how the phases are being altered. Okay, um, let's just turn that down for a second. Let's just try to recap the main points. Just shut that off, shut that off. So the key points are when sinusoids, which are also referred to as frequency components, are passed through a system, their amplitudes and phases can be altered by the system. Now a system's frequency response describes how each sinusoid is altered by the system. Now the sinusoid will only be altered in terms of magnitude and phase. And the frequency of a sinusoid is never changed by the system. So really there's two parts to the frequency response. There's a magnitude response which we've, we've been introduced to in that last demonstration and also the phase response which we haven't really looked at yet but we'll look at in future presentations. Okay, thanks for your attention. I'll see you in the next presentation.